fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her will change the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide and don't tell Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! Some games try to tell an engaging story, some try to do quick hack and slash action, and some try to give you an uneasy feeling or even scare the hell out of you. Well, Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice attempts to do all three in a unique way that I've never seen done before, at least in terms of video games. I don't think I've ever seen a game take the ideas of mental psychosis this far, and I'm proud to say that Hellblade does it with flying colors. There wasn't one moment I was playing this game when I was intense, scared, wondering confused about what was going to happen next, but in the best way possible. But with all that being said, Hellblade does have a few flaws that hold it back from being that near perfect game. So come with me, let's dive into the action packed psychological thriller that is Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice. The story of Hellblade is as classic as Super Mario or Castlevania. Upon the death of her love, Senua goes into the depths of hell to reclaim his soul so the two can be together once more. It's such a sweet and entry level story, am I right? Wrong. This game's story is actually quite deep and horrifying and tragically beautiful, but mostly tragic. And it all comes from the fact that our main protagonist, Senua, is a schizophrenic. This idea is brilliant for a video game, though few titles rarely if ever get this idea right and resort to the supernatural to tell a deep psychological tale a la Silent Hill 2. She will almost always hear voices from every corner telling her to keep going or back away, or that this will kill her, that there is no going back. It's a haunting experience, even more so when you consider that the audio was recorded in binaural audio, so if you have a pair of headphones, put them on because it will feel like the voices are right in the room. Plus, this means the developers can have a hell of a good time with the level design. Another brilliant thing the game does when handling her psychosis is that it doesn't depict her as a stereotypical insane character where there is no way you can relate to her. Since the game takes place in her mind, everything makes sense to her and her alone as she pushes forward and you learn a lot about her past, like how she was raised, where she met her, her love, why she was a warrior in the first place, and a bit about her family. It's interesting, just the idea that the game is kind of just one big mental argument she's having with herself. Sinua is a very well developed character on the grounds that you're always learning about her in the world or the occasional flashback so the game doesn't need to stop too often for her to blather on with stock moments and the game is always heading on forward. So overall the story is very well done, but that's just one part of the game. What about its gameplay? The first 30 minutes of the game are a great introduction to the game's story, atmosphere, combat, and Senua herself. As you can see, there are no HUD elements on the screen, so you have to go off of other things to get you through to the end. Gameplay for Senua's Sacrifice is split into three categories, as one part walking simulator, one part puzzle, and one part character action, all coming together to make a very solid experience. However, I would say that you spend slightly more time walking and solving puzzles than you do cutting people open at least in the beginning. The walking sections are partially where Senua's character is fleshed out. As you walk through the gorgeously dark backgrounds, the voices will sometimes drop hints of Senua's past, or she will recall something about her family said, or even a voice that is portrayed as the game's camera monologue, Senua's dilemmas and feelings. It's a good way to justify some of the backtracking you have to do in the game, or when you're stuck on a puzzle. There are even lore stones hidden throughout the linear levels to give you a bit more backstory to the Norse mythology, which, by the way, getting all of them before the end gives you a little extra cutscene, so, you know, 
definitely get all of them. Not only that, but the walking segments give you a moment to admire just how good this $30 game looks. I mean, it looks just as good as something I'd see for $60. That's no lie. This is one of those games like Gears of War 4 that shows you how good Unreal 4 can be. The level design of Hellblade is very simple and straightforward. You walk, you hit a dungeon type map with a puzzle and some goons, solve the problem, and move on. But the way it's handled here is pretty cool. You start off in the game with a match the shape puzzle where you'll be given one to three shapes that you have to find somewhere in the world by connecting objects or shadows, sometimes at an angle or finding different vantage points. It's honestly really easy at first, but near the end of the game, it will make you earn these shapes by searching every corner of the map and focusing on the most unlikely things, which is equal fun and frustrating. Other puzzles for the game include objects I call illusion gates that reveal hidden passages and broken objects that again you must look for at a certain point to reconnect. It's simple, but it works surprisingly well with the game's world, and I really like how often they would combine all of these things to make somewhat complex puzzles, but it wasn't all that hard, at least until the end. And it should be mentioned that because our heroine is mentally ill, the game thinks it's a good idea to get scarier and scarier as the story progresses. Like seriously, there is some stuff in here that will make you check under your bed. And you know what, game? I'm okay with that, for a few reasons. One, the game never throws any cheap jump scares at you. It's all about building the tension and cranking the visual weirdness up to 11. While combining that with the creepy as hell voices, you will get scared, I can guarantee you that. I know it had me looking behind my shoulder at least once, and there was one specific enemy that gave me a freaking nightmare. And for those of you who beat the game, you know who I'm talking about. Hashtag tame the beast, am I right? I'll end it by saying that I think it does horror better than some recent horror games. Okay guys, now it's time to talk about the combat, which in a way can be described as baby's first character action game. You have your heavy and light attacks with a dodge button that makes you absolutely invincible. No joke. A kick attack that throws enemies off their balance, and what is probably the absolute lifesaver in the game. The focus button. God, this is awesome. Now even though that's basically everything the combat is, you guessed it, a bit more deep than that. And it comes from its design. You see, since you don't have a HUD, the game had to think of other ways to display your focus meter, so they slapped it on that little mirror on your hip. So keep your eye on it, you'll need focus to survive. Not only that, but as you can see, the camera never backs up, even in combat, so it's a tight behind the back setup, like you would see in, say, Resident Evil 4, and it kinda handles the situation the same way. You see, in Resident Evil 4, enemies that were behind you would give you audio cues so that you could react on time to take them out so there were no cheap hits. In Hellblade, Senua's voices tell her when an enemy from behind or to the side is about to hit her, so you can dodge proper. They will also tell you when you can use focus or even help you during boss fights and crucial in-game moments. So keep your ears open, guys. There's even a decent combo system hidden away in the game. If you know your character action moves, just go by the basics and see what you can find, like square, square, triangle, or square, triangle, square. You get the idea. At the start, the game doesn't hit you with too many enemies, coming in waves at three at most. In the beginning, later on the game will slam the crap out of you with five, six, seven, freaking eight enemies. And the enemies in the game have a decent variety from simple club runs to shield guys and big mofos with giant clubs, fast moving big guys that can throw their weapons. Combining this with a close camera and combat can get as intense as anything you've seen in say Revengeance or Devil May Cry. And I'm not saying it's as complex, but the intensity is definitely felt. Okay. Let me stop for a second and say this. The game is pretty fair when it comes to difficulty, but in the last few stages it gets crazy hard. Like really, really fast. Like I was not expecting that hard of a difficulty spike on the last battle. So word of advice, master the dodge and spam that focus. It should also be mentioned that Hellblade features permadeath. If you look closely, Senua has rot growing on her right arm, and it continues to grow each time she dies, and when it gets to her head, then she dies and your save file is deleted. Now in the beginning this sounds frustrating as hell, but I'm here to tell you, do not worry, okay? In my playthrough of the game, I only died three times, and it didn't get a game over. Plus, if I'm being honest, it's not that hard until the end. And combat isn't the only way you can die, as the game has stealth sections. 
Yeah, you heard me right, stealth sections, where they throw you in a huge dark room and you have to listen for a monster and try to avoid it. This is the only section of the game where it has it, and you'll be going through multiple rooms. But there's also a section of the game where you have to stay in the light, otherwise the darkness itself will kill you. And these were, without a doubt, the scariest parts of the game. Bosses in the game are awesome. They're everything I want a boss to be, each having a unique design and techniques exclusive to them. Now, there are only three real bosses in the game, and I won't spoil the bosses because they were all a hell of a good time, but I will say this. Take your time with them and listen to the hints. Oh, and before I forget, the game has an epic soundtrack, so yeah, check that shit out. Now, previous reviews have said the game clocks in at 7 to 10 hours, and I'm here to tell you right now, that's an outright lie. I've seen playthroughs on YouTube that have gone to 5 hours, some even 4 and a half. My playthrough, completely blind, was 6 and a half hours. And for $30, that's pretty damn good, especially considering when you think of Call of Duty's campaigns that are only like 5 hours long, and that's $60, when this one is 30 in the end, guys, this game was excellent with its story, puzzles, combat, with the exception of a few difficulty spikes here and there. I had a wonderful time from beginning to end. And I will say the ending might confuse some people for a little bit if you didn't really follow the story all the way through or if you might have missed a few pieces of information here and there. I know it had me confused for a little bit. I had to watch the ending again. I even had to watch the, uh, the feature documentary that's in it that shows you what they went through to make the game and they spoil the story, really. But I love this game, if you couldn't already tell, and if you were on the fence about getting this game or not, you should do it. It's absolutely worth every penny, and I hope this brings back the mid-range game. AAA looking games at a $30 price. So, in the end, I'll give Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice an 8 out of 10. I would have given it a 9 out of 10 if it wasn't for those problems I had towards the end, but I still love this game and absolutely recommend it. And uh, Ninja Theory, if you're watching, this is the best game you guys have ever made. While I enjoyed Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry Definitive Edition, and I enjoyed Enslaved, you guys really knocked it out of the park here. And I can't wait to see what you guys do next. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.